I will not keep you long this morning, but will endeavor rather to instill in a few words the desire that we all reawaken the Christ consciousness within. The subject is Easter awakening. At this time, our thoughts turn toward the awakening within us, the restoring, the resurrection of the Christ consciousness within. That consciousness which Jesus manifested so completely the aspect of love and compassion. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In other words, in Christ's consciousness, we find the truth because God's omniscience is in that. In the life which is the Holy Ghost, he might have said, I am the way, the truth, and the light, because in St. John, it says that very thing, that in that life is the light of man. The light of the Holy Ghost is the Christ consciousness within. That's one aspect. The other aspect is the omniscience of God. Therefore, Jesus said, I am the truth. And the omniscience of God being there. His great love. Everything is there. Divine Mother is the light of the Holy Ghost, which has produced all things. Therefore, you can see Jesus, the truth of Jesus' words, I am the way, the truth, the omniscience of God, and the light of that omniscience. That is what we must never forget. Jesus, as all great saints, came on earth to set the example for human progress. But one thing we must never forget is this, that they came to show the way of salvation from delusion. And the way, as I have said, is the mercy in the Holy Ghost within. A tangible thing, the light of which can be perceived at this point. If you dwell in it, you will lift your consciousness from outward things to the omniscience of God. Then you will know, as Jesus said, I and my Father are one. It would not be fair. God would not be just if he just sent saints once in a while who could say that. I and my Father are one. All can say that. All who lift their consciousness into the light of the Holy Ghost, who resurrect within themselves the Christ conscious. And so remember, Jesus said, these things which I do, ye shall do, and greater things. In other words, each and every one of us can start at this Easter time to reawaken, to resurrect, to renew what is ours, the Christ consciousness within. We have that power. Jesus said that also, in the 82nd Psalm, we read, I have said, now that is not just the ordinary waking consciousness or intellectual consciousness of the psalmist. It means the Christ consciousness says through me, ye are God, children of the Most High. There is no excuse that we do not resurrect the presence of God within us as Jesus manifested so wonderfully in love and compassion. Now remember, I have said in the Christ consciousness within is the omniscience of God. Therefore, the aspects of Christ consciousness are multitudinous. The fullness of God is there. That's why some saints manifest one aspect, some another. Jesus manifested, as we have said, love and compassion. We also find that this Christ consciousness is the same as was in the saints of old. King Jadava, the Krishna. Krishna means Christ consciousness, that's all. King Jadava, the Krishna. King Jadava, who manifested Christ consciousness. The same Christ consciousness. 
the same omniscience of God which Jesus manifested when he said, I and my Father are one. He meant the omniscience of God is in me, manifest through me, through my voice, through my hands, my feet, and through the love in my heart. In the Gita, in the fourth discourse, fifth verse, we have proof that Lord Krishna, who was Bawaji, had that Christ consciousness, for he said, he said to Arjuna, he said, many births have been left behind by me and by thee, O Arjuna. I know them all, but thou knowest not thine. So you see, King Jadava was one with the Christ consciousness, the omniscience of God. Then going on down through the different saints, Lord Shankara manifested the aspect of Christ consciousness, of an expansion of consciousness from the limitations of the body to the omniscience of God's presence when he said, I am he. I am he. Blissful spirit. I am he. He didn't mean his little body. He meant the Christ consciousness in him is one with God the Father. Jesus said the same thing. I and my Father are one. Same thing. Each and every one of us can say that if we will reawaken, reestablish, renew, resurrect the sleeping presence of God within us. Ramakrishna, you know, manifested the aspect of Divine Mother's love. It's all in the omniscience of God. So much so, but when you mentioned her name, he went into ecstasy. St. Ignatius manifested what? The will, the will of the infinite. Each saint manifests different aspects of the one Christ consciousness which Jesus gave so fully. Then we have the master. The master manifests love, as you know, sacrifice. And also, he manifested a special dispensation from the omniscience of God, that all who will, can, irrespective of race, color, or creed, resurrect this Christ consciousness within. He made it easy by giving us the proper method to once more regain our oneness with Christ consciousness. The Master also manifested the aspect of love, for it is he who said, when people hate me, I still give them love. I keep on giving them love and wait for them to change. Isn't that wonderful? Why should we? Why should we not go on loving them? If they are at fault, they will change. Why should we lose our peace and calmness of God within us? We should not. And so that was another of the Master's manifestations of an aspect of the presence of God within him. Another was of sacrifice. Thousands and thousands throughout America, he took their trouble, he took their karma, and in India, sacrificed himself. And that's why he often said, my life is a ransom for me. In other words, he sacrificed that aspect of Christ consciousness, he sacrificed himself that that aspect of Christ consciousness of love and devotion and security in God. He had a wonderful sense of security. You felt the presence of God when you went in his presence. Why? Because he manifested that great security of God's omniscience. But he sacrificed in doing it. And so you can see, I could pass down through others, St. Francis, as I have said, his life ran parallel to Jesus' life of love and compassion. And in spite of a frail body, in spite that near the end he was practically blind, he went on, went on manifesting the Christ consciousness within. He was able to show that that great bond of joy which he felt leveled off all the paradoxes of life and moved out all the discrepancies of a weak body and such things. That's the power of God. And so Jesus, this is his day. You all know Jesus manifested as we 
uh, affirm together in the whisper the great love and compassion, love and compassion for his brothers. When he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They know not, O oh Father, that it is you, it is you who are manifesting through my voice and my hands and my feet and my heart. It is the Christ consciousness that they are sinning against, not my little body. That's why he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They were sinning directly against the presence of God which Jesus manifested. That shows what? The highest love and compassion. And by that, by that, he sacrificed his body, but he gained complete freedom of the presence of God, the omniscience of God, oneness with his Father, eternal. And each and every one of us can do likewise without doubt. I'll pass on quickly. The question is how, how to awaken the vastness of our underlying divinity. That's the point. Now, this is important because our own desire and our will is not enough. You cannot do it by that. You have to have help. We must have help. And the key, the key to the help which we must have, you will find in 3 John, the 14th and 15th verses, with these words, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In other words, we have to lift our consciousness from the littleness of ego to the vastness of the divinity within us. How? By resurrecting renewing the sleeping presence of God within us at the base of the spine. If we arouse that which we can do by simply following the techniques which the Master has given us, as karmic conditions are bettered, and as the old habits fall off, and the latent impulses are still, the presence of God will be aroused, and it will surge up through the spine, up through the spinal centers, reawakening them into the thousand-rayed lotus. That extra power of the aroused presence of God is necessary for us to once more resurrect the vastness of our divinity within. As that extra power surges up, it opens all the petals of the spinal center. Some are closed when we're born. It opens them up. And by that, we can perceive the omniscience of God within. When those petals are open, then the light of Christ consciousness flows through us. Then we can give to others. Not only will we save our own soul, be saved from delusion, but we can give. That love which we feel of the Infinite Father, the light which we perceive we can give to others, because then Christ consciousness speaks through us, not our own little worldly consciousness. And so you can see the key is, the key is to take help. Help from the presence of God sleeping within you. You just have to arouse it a little bit. Arouse it by following the channel which God has sent. The channel of the beloved master wherein he gives you the techniques and the devotion to clean out the rubbish of delusion and stimulate presence of God within you, that it rise up in its natural course through the spine, through the brain, illumine you with Christ consciousness. It is a tangible thing, not an imagination. The light of God can be perceived. The light of Christ can be lived in. That same light, ages ago, spoken of in the Bhagavad Gita by Lord Krishna, spoken of in our Bible, as the light which led the children of Israel, a cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night, is a tangible thing. It's the presence of Christ within us. It is ours. It is our birthright. We must reclaim it, re-arouse it, awaken it, 
resurrected. Now what is the practical approach to resurrection? Resurrection, as the Master says, this is important. The art of finding out why you are what you are and what you are going to be in the future. We all came from the light of Christ. We are sustained by that light of the Father within. And our problem, the duty of this life, the goal of this life is to what? Consciously return to the omniscience of God. Consciously return to the omniscience of God. And that's why the Master used to write to me. I didn't realize why he wrote. He said, lose not a moment. Nourish yourself. Nourish yourself on God. Nourish yourself on God. Lose not a moment. Why lose not a moment? Because unless we resurrect that consciousness, unless we resurrect, renew, restore the light of Christ right within us now, in this life we cannot do it afterwards. We have to do it right now. And once, resurrecting it, being one with the same Christ consciousness which Jesus manifested, by doing that, resurrecting it, then we have it always. But this is the only vehicle we will have to know God. This is the only vehicle we will have to perceive the omniscience of God and live forever with him consciously. So we have to do it in this life. And if you follow the chain of the great guru, Jesus, Bawaji, Larry Marsha, and our beloved master, through which channel God's consciousness flows continually, if you follow that, it is much easier to resurrect the consciousness of Christ with it. Because God sent that. It is God's channel. You and I have nothing to do with it. The saints have nothing to do with it. It is God who does the whole thing. He has sent that channel. If we follow that channel, it is much easier to resurrect and restore our birthright of Christ consciousness. That's why the Master came as a special dispensation, as I have said, that those, irrespective of race, creed, or color, if they follow, if they follow, they will be lifted up into that invisible peace and joy within the peace and joy of Christ consciousness. It is invisible to outward consciousness. It is invisible to people of the world. They think you're foolish. Something's happened to them. But to those who have it, it is the most real thing in our existence. It is the omniscience of God within us. Follow. Follow the channel God has sent. Channel of the beloved master. It's easier to find Christ conscience. The master also said one other thing. He said, if anyone says that I am their guru, it is so, because it is faith, it is faith that brings the light of God. It is faith that brings the light of God. Faith keeps the windows open so the great light of Christ can shine. I'm going to just take a moment or two to read a part of one of his letters he wrote way back in 1926, about faith, and then I'll be through. I'd rather give you his words than my own words. Faith is the window through which the divine light shines. None wishes more than the divine light itself to shine through the window of our faith and give us health, prosperity, and bliss. That is, we don't have to go hunting God. We don't have to go hunting the light of Christ. It's there. We just have to open the window and let it come in. But through long continued wrong living and forgetfulness to God, we close the windows of faith and the divine light is shut out, producing sickness and want. Losing faith means closing windows. 
keeping the presence of God out from manifesting through us. Losing faith means closing windows. What you see, you believe easily. But God suggests himself enough in nature. And he goes on to say why he talked enough to me through the budding mouth of the rose and the petal and his petal cheek blushed in joy to see me through the sunshine as the flowers give without thought of reward. So God gives. If we just look a bit to find him, those that believe in spite of everything, they gradually see the super law work. We are like children yet, asking this and that from the Divine Mother, and sometimes when she cannot give us something because of her laws, because our common condition is such we cannot perceive her, then we doubt her and her power. But keep on, he says. Keep on meditating, and then shall come one day when all the veil will be lifted. These words are absolutely true. Those who follow, the veil is lifted without question of a doubt, and the light of Christ is there. There will come a time when the, day, the veil will be torn, and all the veil of laws created by delusion and by our own action will be gone. And we will be free standing face to face before our Divine Mother. This is an actual thing. This consciousness which seems so real, the flowers and you and me, but when you stand before the light of God, it is much more real because it is the cause of these flowers, the cause of you and the cause of me. We will stand face to face with our Divine Mother. Then we will see her protection working behind the physical, untrammeled, uninterruptedly, then nothing but the breeze of immortality and perennial joy will sustain us. Work for that. It is a long walk, but keep busy, and someday, suddenly, the end will be reached. Don't look how far you have to go, but how little you have to walk today. That's why Larry Marshall said, do a little career each day. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of heaven. Think how little you have to do today, how little you have to meditate deeply and long. It is because many people neglect being deeply devoted in their daily meditation that they feel the distance too great. It's impossible to conceive Christ with worldly consciousness. That's why it seems so distant. But in meditation, the veil is lifted. There's no time or space in Christ's consciousness which Jesus manifested. It's there, eternally there, eternal now. Give up hopes and fears and desires. That's all we have in this life, hopes and fears and desires and frustrations and nothing comes out right. Give that up, he says. Cry for the Divine Mother. Every time after meditation, say, Divine Mother, this day is past, and I have not seen thee yet. Love and bless. So you see the Master in his infinite wisdom shows us the way, shows us the way, whereby we can be saved from delusion. Contact, remember. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He could have said light. Contact with the Holy Ghost within us, is the only way we can be saved. Contacting that light, as he says, the light shineth behind the darkness. The darkness within is there as you start along the path to reclaim, renew Christ within you. But proceed, and behind that darkness you will see shining the light of Christ. Follow that, because only by that only by that can we reawaken the Christ consciousness within. We are reawakening temporarily at first, just for a little bit. We get little flashes, but permanently by the grace of God.
permanently, not a thing in imagination. Christ is a real conscience. It is our birthright. We can attain it. We can resurrect it. As it says in Titus, not by works of righteousness, not by doing little things. They're necessary, but by one thing, washing and regeneration of the Holy Ghost with it, merging in it. Merging means receiving. Those who receive Christ, all those who receive the light of Christ within, all those who are one with the light of the Holy Ghost within, what happens? They are given the power to become the sons of God, to realize their oneness with God. Jesus manifested the presence of God within him completely. You and I, being children of the Most High, being sons and daughters of God, can without doubt do likewise.